Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to provide just a quick overview of thinking about learning Azure in 2022. I created a version of this last year and nothing significantly has changed, but I did create a couple of new resources that may help with that overall path. As always, this is useful. Please do like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit that bell icon to get notified of new content. Now, Azure is vast. There's a huge array of different services and technologies, and I don't really think there's a right way to learn. Everyone learns differently. Some learn just by reading, some will learn by watching. Many people need to get their hands on and, and try it to really absorb and understand it. But in terms of the areas of Azure, I really do think there's a few key areas everyone should at least have a grounding in. I think about things like identity. So we think about, for example, Azure Active Directory, conditional access, authentication, authorization, seamless sign-on, understanding those grounding concepts and how Azure AD plays in the overall Azure architecture. And then think about governance. And that may seem a little bit strange, but understanding the idea of role-based access control and policy and budgets and tagging and naming, management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, have that, again, foundational knowledge of those really key constructs. I think about infrastructure having a grounding understanding of networking, of compute resources, of storage. Because what we'll see is many other types of service will sit on top of these. So if I understand the basics of networking and storage and compute and the types of VM SKUs and scale sets, that's gonna really help me with many, many other things. Now previously, I had a whole list of links. And instead of going through a whole list of links, what I did was I created a site, um, learn.onboardtoazure.com. So my recommendation, I'm gonna kind of go through some of these, is if you head over to this site, what I actually do is I go through what I think is a good curated path. So people kept asking me, what is the recommended place to start? Hey, you have so many videos on your site, where do I begin? So I basically created this page, it's just a very simple JavaScript page, that's how I would think about learning Azure. And obviously this Learn Azure in 2021, I'm gonna replace with this video. So step one is you wanna be able to get hands on. I do think there are some people that say, hey, I just read things and I can learn it, great. Most of us humans will need some hands on. Maybe I have access through work, Maybe I have like a Visual Studio, an MSDN, you get a certain amount of credits a month, or you can actually go and sign up for a free account. So I've got that kind of link here for the free Azure sign up. That's gonna give you a certain bucket of money for a month. Then there are some services that are free for a year and some that are always free. So I definitely recommend you go and get that. It's gonna help you to get some of that hands on. Now realize whether it's free or Visual Studio or work, you always wanna be efficient with how you spend the money. And the whole point of Azure is it is consumption-based. I pay for what I'm using. So really think about when you go and create your resources, one of the things you're gonna learn very, very quickly is something called a resource group. And what I would recommend is for every kind of lab exercise you do, create them in their own resource group. So in everything you create, be it a VM, the disk of that virtual machine, maybe it's network interface card, maybe a public IP, maybe it's a database, a load balancer, they're all gonna be grouped together. And why that's really important is when you finish with that lab, rather than trying to scour around and find things that's all mixed together, I can just go and delete that resource group, which will delete everything in it. Because for example, a virtual machine, I may think, oh, okay, I'll delete the VM, but I've left the disk behind, and the disk may actually cost me more than the virtual machine. So you don't wanna leave things behind. Thinking about optimizing that money, make sure you do shut things down when you're not using them, and shut them down in a deallocated way. If I was to jump over for a second, and I was to go and look at my virtual machines, you'll notice one of them just says stopped. So in the guest operating system, I stopped it. 
but that doesn't deallocate it from the Azure fabric, i.e. I am still paying for it. I want it to say stopped deallocated, at which point I'm no longer paying for that resource for the computer. I'll still be paying for its disk, but I'm not paying for the resource anymore. So what I would want to do is come in here and actually do a stop. Then that will deallocate it from the fabric and I will stop paying for it. So make sure we stop things when we're not using them to again, stretch out and really optimize our spend. If it's dev test, hey, pick small resources, pick burstable virtual machines that are just big enough to do the job. Pick standard hard disk drives for the disk so it's as cheap as possible. We just wanna really uh, optimize our spend. Now, when you're starting out, the portal is a great place to go. It's really nice and intuitive. You can kind of look around, you can work things out. So it's good to try and get some familiarity actually with that. The Microsoft Docs are absolutely fantastic. If you're trying to learn something, I definitely would recommend going through the Microsoft Docs. So I think about go and get that free account. If you're interested in Azure AD, there's actually a Microsoft developer program that gets you a 90 day rolling sandbox so it can keep being renewed if you're actually using it. And then, okay, well, how do I learn? What do I want to think about? And I do think the certifications can be a great place to start. So they have an Azure Fundamentals. So there's an AZ900 Azure Fundamentals. If I was thinking about just in general learning and I think about some of these topics, for most of us, a great place to start would kind of be the AZ900. So that's gonna cover a lot of the grounding things at a very basic level, just so we understand what they are, but it's a really good place to start. And Microsoft have a full certification learning path around that. So if I was to kind of scroll down in the site, so what I did is I created my own course. So I've got a eight and a half hour, there's no adverts, it's just a YouTube playlist. So that will give you great info. There's a repo of a full handout. I create a study cram that you can watch just before the exam. But then if you actually go and look up here, so there's learn modules. So if I go and click this link, it's gonna take you to the Microsoft page and then it's got all these great learn modules. So that's more text-based. There might be a couple of videos, but there might be some labs you can go and try in that free subscription you've done. You can kind of watch my, again, learning course if that's useful to you, the study cram. There's a few extra little things about what to expect. If you're nervous about, well, it's my first exam, there's actually an exam environment simulation. So this will actually kind of show you, hey, what I'm gonna expect during that actual exam. I'm just gonna shrink that down so I can see the buttons. So this is, it's gonna tell you how many questions there are, how long you have, the required score. And you can just go through and get a nice little feeling for, okay, what is it gonna ask? The types of questions, hey, just select one. Maybe it's selecting multiple answers. Maybe it's dragging the right answer into an area. Maybe it's putting them in a certain order. But that's a really nice place to go to maybe remove some tension about, well, exactly what am I gonna expect? What is it gonna expect me to know? So use the learn modules, they're really good. Use the documentation. Now things do change very, very frequently. Microsoft has a nice blog that goes through the updates. And what I do is I create a weekly video of what the last week's updates are. So if you don't wanna read the blogs and find it over Azure and Azure AD and other areas, I kind of summarize that each week. So kind of stay up to date. Once you've done the AZ900, another nice fundamentals one I think is the SC900, which again is more about the identity security elements. And then at that point, it depends completely on what you want to do. Maybe you wanna go and be more in the admin space, so hey, admin, maybe I'll go and do the 104. But there were ones about data, there's ones about security, um, there's DevOps, there's obviously the architect cert, which I get admin, which is actually a nice path now. So then there's architect, which is in beta 305. So I go and get 104, there's 305, and I get my architect cert. It's actually a nice poster. So if I jump back over for a second, I've got the link to it on the Learn site. So if you're curious about well, what are all my options, there is this certification poster. 
And if we go and look at that, it shows all the ones for Azure. So we can talk about these fundamental ones. So there's like Azure Fundamentals, the AZ900, AI Fundamentals, Azure Data Fundamentals. Um, if we kind of keep going up, we can see there are some other ones down here, security compliance down the bottom. There's that SC900 I was talking about. But then you can get into maybe certain specialities, Azure Virtual Desktop, SAP, IoT. Some of them are role-based. Hey, security engineer, admin associate, developer associate, AI, data, huge numbers. And then as part of those as well, we have the experts. So the expert certs, again, is that architect and the DevOps. So there's a whole set of different options available to you. There's no right or wrong. It depends on what is your interest. But I would say the key point is get some hands on. If you're starting out completely fresh, I think it would be good, do that AZ900. I think the SC900 is also very applicable to most things. And then you go off in whatever direction, be it administration, data, development, IoT, a whole slew of different things. And maybe the end goal is kind of get the architect, get the DevOps expert certifications, but it's really down to your interest. But I hope this helps. I hope it gives you some place to at least start. And uh, yeah, just good luck with uh, all your Azure endeavors in 2022 and beyond.